this long. If you get the chance to um, study or study worship, and you want to, there's an object of worship, and that's our God. Well, we have to understand uh, at Capital City Church, we say, oh, we're, it's missional, it's missional, it's missional. One, one thing we always say also is that uh, we tend, there's four things that we always say over and over again. We have to understand who God is, correct? We have to understand what God's done, and we got to understand um, who we are, and then what are we supposed to do, right? And so part of that, to be able to understand that fully, is we have to have a heart towards God that, God, whatever you want is more important than anything else in the whole world, amen? And we'll talk about that today. Like, God, you have created us, in Colossians 1.16 says, you have created us to worship him. You have created us, and we're an object of his worship, but we, he has created us to worship us. And when we get that out of balance, things just don't go right, amen? And we'll talk about that and how that works and, and, and how it, in our hearts that if we heart is towards God and all things, that he will provide all the joy and peace and love that we need, right? So there's a, we, we're looking for uh, uh, fulfillment, we're looking for love, we're looking for affection, we're looking for all these wonderful things, and I think we all do that naturally, but then God in, in his wisdom, when he created us and he designed us, he said, I will give you all those things when your object of worship yes. is me. Yes. You say, man, and I, I want to share that with you. When you say, when you focus or refocus, and that's what we're going to try to do today, we're going to refocus our worship to the one who created us in his image. And when we do, when we do, joy unspeakable and full of glory, and rivers of living water will flow out of us, and peace that flows from heaven above is part of our lives, and no matter what life throws at you, my worship is God. And when I worship Him, not all the things that happen in the world, it's, a, it's, not, it's not important. Amen. And then when we worship Him and the joy that floods our soul overwhelms us, we have to tell somebody. We can't keep it to ourselves. It comes out of us. Amen? And it's so important that we realize that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And then we want to share because our God met our needs so miraculously. I got a job. Hallelujah. We're going to shout and joy from the mountaintop because look what God has done again. Because I didn't trust my own ability, but I prayed. I said, God, I need a job. And a job was provided and then we give him all the glory man that's how it works because then when you know that god fulfills the need whoo, we're happy we're happy amen praise the lord that's my sermon in a nutshell so let's go over and look at it right hallelujah <laughs> amen let's get out of the altar and let's clean up ourselves and get it right with that so at the end of service today i'll let you know we're going to have a time at the altar and why because when this Take a moment to receive what God has spoken today and reflect on that in our hearts, in the depth of our heart. Not just like, oh yeah, that's what Pastor said, I'm just so good, I'm trying to be more joyful. Ha ha. No. You can't be joyful because if you don't get this right in your heart, then there's you can manufacture the happiness, but it never is real. Right. Amen? You can try to be joyful through things and through accomplishments and all those things, but you, there's no true happiness until we get it right with God. So today I have, uh, I'm going to tell you, I got a pen and paper down there. We're each going to get one of those. We're going to come down here to the altar, and we're going to kneel down, and we're going to ask God to show us anything in our lives that, that is not, that hinders us from truly, truly putting Him the object of our worship. All right? And then we're going to, once you're released from that, how many of you ever, anybody ever pray and God forgave you something? Some of us have that experience, you know? You ask God, please forgive me for being yucky. And then God says, uh, you're forgiven and you feel the peace of God coming from you. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Right, so when we worship this morning, when we come to the altar, we're going to um, have a piece of paper. We're going to write things down that the Holy Spirit reveals to you that's hindering you from being God, being the focus of your worship. And when you do that, and you release from that, and the peace of God comes over, we got this, I got this shredder right here. We're going to shred those pieces of paper. All right. All right. So it's only between you and God, right? You don't have to tell Pastor Bob. You don't have to tell, you know, we have to stand up and confess our sins to everybody. No. But God knows that we're going to get rid of that out of our lives so we can get rid of it once and for all. We're going to do the act of actually 
writing it down on paper, and we're going to shred it in the shredder so we don't have to remember those no more. And we can't go back and pick them up out of the shredder later on. <laughs> we can't go back and tape, tape them together and say, oh yeah, it's still me, I got this problem in my life. No, we're going to put the problem in the shredder. We're going to pray over you after we're done, and together as a family, and we're going to say, God, no more. Lord, you be the focus of our worship. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's look at uh, Psalms 138. And we're going to go really slow. And uh, I will I'll try not to contain, I'll try to contain myself. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm so, oh, I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited. You know, I, God is good. Yeah. Amen. All the time. Verse one. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Stop. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. True worship is all of your heart, not part of it's hidden. There's the, the sin corner there that God doesn't know about. I, I can't. All of it is open and exposed to God. With all my strength, with all. Remember, it says the commandment Jesus gave us was, I should love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, all who I am, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to love God, right? We can't do that when we have hidden things in our heart. And God says, and here's the psalmist David says, I will praise him with all my heart. Nothing left in me but all my affections towards the God that loves us and created us for that purpose. Amen? I will praise him with all my heart. So close your eyes for a moment. And just tell God, I want to worship you with all my heart. I want to worship you, God, with nothing held back. Yes. With all my mind, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, God, I want to worship you. I want to true be a true. Remember, in the, John tells about the true worshiper. <clears throat> I'll get to that in a second. So this is. I have an example of all my heart. I love being a grandparent. It's the greatest thing in the world. I love that I raise my children. I love that experience all my life, but I'll tell you, there's nothing like being a grandpa. Yeah. Amen? And a grand grandma, right? And we just love it when the grandkids come over. I mean, they can ask for anything, and guess what they get from grandpa, right? Yeah. There's marshmallows in the cabinet in the kitchen, and his, Esther knows exactly where they're at. And guess what Esther gets when she gets to the house? She gets a marshmallow from grandpa, right? <laughs> That's what it is. And you know what? Or when we give presents to our grandchildren, it's the greatest thing. They open them up, right? And you know this is this is my example. So they, I give the grandchildren a present, and if they, what would it be like if they would just like open it up and go, oh, that's nice, yeah. right? That's like half-heartedness, right? They're like half, like okay, oh thank you, grandpa, or whatever, right? But I love it when they open their present. And they get all full of joy. They come running and give me a big hug, right? They 100% saying, yes, thank you, Grandpa. Thank you, Grandpa. Right? They love, like, uh, Esther got the little uh, dress this week or last week, you know? And she was all excited, put it on right away, danced around the house, you know? She's just excited. I mean, that's awesome. What if she would have put that little skirt on and just kind of like, ah, whatever, you know? Thanks a lot, Grandma, you know? <laughs> It's like, there's like half-heartedness. It wasn't like with her full heart, but with her full heart, so much of joy. She just comes running, and yesterday, we were at the, we had a family reunion yesterday, and she found, when they got there, uh, Esther came running up to me and gave me a big hug, and she's hung on to me. You know, and then she put her head down on my shoulder, she must have been a little tired. But you know, I just love that, right? She fully loved me, and appreciated me, right? And just loved on me so much, right? And she would let go, and until my back was hurting so bad, I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, but I just love that so much. And you know what? Our Father in Heaven loves it too. Yes, yes. He is excited just like I am when you love on Him. Yes. Amen? And maybe a, a hundred times more, I can't even imagine what Father God does, but He loves when we worship. When we sing the songs that we sing, but it's more than just singing the songs. And this worship team did a great job leading us in those songs. But you know what? It's like a heart. I mean, I can sit, sit here and sing songs and not have really anything going on here, right? 
singing the words, blah, 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 right? And we're looking good because we're in church. But, you know, it's a different atmosphere here when we just have a pure worship, right? When people are just worshiping God, it changes the atmosphere in this building, right? I mean, so much, it's, it stays so much in the building. I mean, when people come in here, they notice there's something about this building, right, brother? But like, there's, God is in this place. I love it when the AA group and the LNI group come here because they can't leave here because there's something about here because we love, we want you to love you. I remember praying with my children when they're just little baby, little ones, you know? We keep them in our bedroom, you know, we had a little, I made a cradle with a little chair my first daughter was made and uh, born and, and uh, all my kids stayed, so most of my grandchildren slept in that little cradle that I made. But anyway, we used to just pray over them, God, let them love you. Yes. Right? I don't know if they're going to be preachers or teachers or whatever, they don't have to be, but God, I don't care, just as long as they love you, right? And that's what I pray over you guys. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, spirit. Love with everything that's in you. Be true worshipers of, of the Lord our God. That's what I've been praying this week. And look at ver the last part of verse uh, 1. It says, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praises. Before kings, before the world, I'm going to praise your name. I'm not going to be embarrassed because of who you are. And, you know, and something happens in their lives when that happens. But it's happened to you. I'm going to have boldness because of God in me. Amen? And because I'm fully worshiping Him, God's going to give boldness to you to do marvelous things. We can fulfill Matthew 28, the Great Commission, because we're worshiping God. And He puts in us His Spirit, and it becomes alive with our spirit. We're connected with the power of God, and we can do Great things for the kingdom of God. Worship the true God. God is looking for people that are worship with, with, will worship Him in John 4 in spirit and in truth. And we, let's go back and let's look at, well, I'll be reading for you. It says, But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And listen, the next part of that verse is so key to that whole section of chapter 4. It says, for the Father is seeking such a people to worship Him. God is seeking worshipers. In Colossians 1, it tells us that we were created to worship our God. What an amazing thing. Yes, I, I don't really realize how much God wants us to worship Him. Yes. Why? Why is that important? I mean, God must be really conceited if He wants all of us just to worship Him, right? What is this about, right? What is it about? Because what happened? We worship the true God, the one who gave life, the one who has eternal life, the one we're going to worship in heaven. We read about Revelation chapter 5. Could you imagine? That I was reading this over and over. Thousands upon thousands upon 10,000 upon 10,000 angels, along with all the nations represented and the elders, worshiping Jesus. And then there's these, and we can't, and, and, you know, they bow down. We take the crown of life that we've given, and we bow down to Jesus. We give him our crown because he's worthy to receive that. We didn't get it on our own. He did it. He paid the penalty of our sin. So we're going to worship him and bow down and honor him. We can do that now before we get there, right? Kind of practice now to worship Jesus before we get there, right? Get our heart focused on the right thing. That's why we teach Jesus over and over and over and over. It's about Jesus and what he's done in your life and what he's done in my life and what he's doing in the world, right? And he's an object of our worship. And if we praise him and worship him, I'm thinking of this, those angels, right? Ten thousands upon ten thousand angels, right? The elders, they bow down and they're going to worship Jesus. Yeah. We're probably going to do the same thing. Right. Sing, worthy is the Lamb of God. And then there's these angels. Read it. They have wings, six wings. Okay, I don't want to get too far off track, but they have eyes on their wings. Yeah. On the front and on the back. <laughs> We're not able to look at the glory of God. We're going to be bowed down because the glory of God is going to be so awesome. And so amazing, these, but these angels are watching the glory of God, and then they're watching us worship God. Yes. And they're singing, holy, holy, I mean, they're going crazy. They're like, this is amazing. The God that's the creator of all things, redeemed all things, 
is now being worshipped. And they're like awed at that. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I experienced some of that this morning as we worship together. Amen. Amen. As we worship together, the presence of God fills my heart. When I'm in my prayer closet and God's there, He fills that room, right? When I'm here to say, we're praying when nobody's here. Sometimes, I'll tell you, I get a little scared when I'm in the presence of God. Does anybody do that? Yes. Like, I come here this week, I was praying here, laying on the, I like to lay right here, just so that you know. I don't know, you can picture that in your mind when you're praying for me. <laughs> Pastor Bob is taking his afternoon nap right here. <laughs> I mean, praying before God. And God's presence was so amazing, I ran out of the sanctuary. I couldn't stay in here any longer. I know I can, I know I can sit like that. Do you get like that? Does anybody else get like that? Like, God wants to bring his presence in your life so much that anything that is not of God will diminish so quickly. So you can be the glory of God. And what he does is, man, I, well, I did my dance out in the hallway out there because I just couldn't be in the sanctuary. It's so powerful, right? I'm just telling you, that's what it was. It's amazing, right? Because I wanted to experience the worship that I want to teach you this morning. God wants us, or wants you to, he wants to be the center of your worship. Yes. Amen? Because he's looking for a true worshiper. And when you do, when you experience his power, look at verse 3. It says, uh, verse 2, I'll read the verse 3. It says, I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness, for you have exalted above all things your name and your word. It's an exalted world. When I call, you answered me. You made me bold. Everybody say bold. Oh. And stout-hearted, steadfast in God. Hallelujah. When you worship, God, and he's the object of your worship. There's a boldness, there's a, a, a knowing, there's faith that arises in you. I know who my God is. And then, verse 4 says, and may all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear your word of your mouth. They're going to hear God's word from who? From you. See, that's like reading a good book or going to a movie. Everybody go to a good movie? Yeah. But what's the first, if you go with somebody, what's the first thing you do is you get out of the theater? What do you talk about? The movie. Yeah. Right? You want to share the, the favorite part or what you thought of it, right? Or you read a good book, right? You read a good chapter. All of a sudden you say, hey, look at this book. I read it. You should get this book. It's a great book. It changed my life. It had a great chapter three. It's awesome, man. The, the plot of it, I just liked it, right? You want to share it. When you're in God's presence and when you worship Him, you got to tell somebody. You can't keep it to yourself. You just want to share it with somebody, amen? Say, Christian, well, Christian, well I'm not, that's not me. I, I'm not an evangelist. You don't have to be an evangelist. You just have to be a lover of God, amen? God has given the spirit of evangel uh, evangelist power to do certain things, to train people. Because if you read Ephesians, the, 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 the uh, gift of evangelist was to the church, to train the church to do what? To go out there and be witnesses for God. That's what the evangelist does. That's what the pastor teacher does. Teaches you how to be servers of God, lovers of God, followers for God, right? How do you get that power of God in your life? You get it from God, not from me, right? But you, it is amplified in your life when you're in His presence. Amen. When you worship Him, when you when you honor Him, when you put Him first place in every area of your life. Okay, well I can't. I'm not that way. I, I'm not a. I can't share Jesus with people. The reason you can't. Can I be? Can I be your pastor for a second? Yeah. <laughs> can I do that? Do you mind? Don't you just don't me. That's fine because I'll go with. I'll be like Stephen. Right? Then you see the heavens open. There's the glory of God. Amen. There's Jesus sitting on the throne. The reason we don't share Jesus because we're not in His presence. That's right. We have we have boldness when we worship God. When the object of our worship is God, because I believe God will take care of all our needs, finances, insurance, relationships. You know, you have problems with your husband or wife, worship God. Yeah. You have problems with finances, worship God. Amen. It sounds so easy, right? It, it's not because worship takes humility. Worship takes, I have to bow down before God and let Him be God in my life, in every area of my life. So it takes an act of, like, I have to say, yes, I will bow down to you, God, because you have the answers to eternal life. Yes. You know all things that I need. But when you humble yourself before our God and you begin to worship in your heart, not, not like 
not like half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly, then God puts in you joy unspeakable yes. and full of glory. How do you get the joy? Of, why am I always happy? I don't know. I didn't have that. Like I just love this. This coming here. I love it. You guys come to our house for Mitchell Community. I love it. I'm exhausted when you leave, but I just love it. <laughs> right? I love it. I love it. I mean, last, last Wednesday night in our Mitchell Community, I think we had like 12 people there, and it was just like this joy that was over everybody. Right? Nobody wanted to leave. I'm like opening up the door. Come on, guys. You know, I got time, time for bed. I'm sorry, just being honest, right? But, but it was just joy because they were excited because we talked about what? Worshiping our God, right? Yeah. God wants to put joy in you because when there's joy in you, it's like reading that good book or seeing that good movie. You got to share it. You got to give it away. You got to send it out, right? It's just the way it is. It's natural. You don't, you don't have to say, okay, Miss Sandy, you need to slow down a little bit. You're getting a little, little excited here, right? No, I want a church that's overly excited about Jesus. How's that sound? Amen? I like, um, I listen to podcasts and, you know, read stuff from all different denominations and different things going on in this country and in the world. You know, there's a, there's a worship movement going on. It's been going on for a long time, right? I'm like, why is this so important? Because the people that are worshiping God are the ones out there boldly proclaiming Jesus in neighborhoods around. I want that here. I want, like, when we go out, when we go out to the, the, the that, that, uh, that weekend, what weekend is, what day, is that two weeks from now or next Saturday? Yeah. So this, this gentleman, I'm going to tell you about this pastor, Pastor Ramirez, for a second. I'll take a commercial break. We can do this. This is, in, this is in a neighborhood that most of you guys want to go to. That's where this is. In Moreland Avenue? Yeah. You want to go here because in this neighborhood, there's where some of the shootings have been, yeah. right? In this neighborhood, there's poverty and there's uh, sex slaves and there's all sorts of drugs and stuff in this neighborhood. This neighborhood right here is like most of us here in this church probably wouldn't go to. But this is exactly where we need to help partner with Pastor Ramirez and his group. And this rapper guy that's coming, this Christian guy, you know, he's pretty, pretty odd. He listens to some of his music, kind of not my favorite, but it's awesome. Yeah. Right? We're going to pray. Would you pray with me now for this event? It's, uh, it's on the 12th, Saturday, 12th, 11 a.m. We're going to start the prayer walk. And uh, I told him, hey, bro, you got to make a better flyer than this, you know? He goes, because that's what we would do in our church. It would be perfect, right? Everything, <laughs> Pastor Andy would get it. He would make it every look nice and all the fine would be just right and everything because that's what, you know, we need. This, this, this area, they just need Jesus, right? They think we're going to walk and pray. <laughs> I remember... Uh, California, we did this, right? We went to a really bad neighborhood in California. Matter of fact, a pastor's daughter got shot and killed in a neighbor in the corner where we were doing minister that week. So I got a whole bus a band full of kids, the senior pastor, myself, and a couple of uh, about ten people. We got it, they said we're going to this neighborhood, we're gonna pray, we're gonna pass out flyers, we're gonna invite people to come to the event on Saturday. So we drive up to this neighborhood, right? I jump out of the car, let's go, you know, and nobody got out of the van. <laughs> They're like, no, we're not getting out of the van. No, we're not getting out of the van. No, this place needs Jesus. We had over 100 people gathered that you hear Jesus that, that weekend. All my kids were there. I'm thinking, if we die, we die preaching Jesus. It doesn't matter to me, right? So anyway, this neighborhood is in Madison, Wisconsin, not very far away. We don't have to go overseas. We just need to go over to that neighborhood and pray with with Hispanics and blacks and whites and purple and pink and we just all get together and lift up the name of Jesus. All right. Yeah. So if you want to go, let me know and we'll uh, get my van full of or my truck full of uh, people. We'll go over there and pray with these guys. Amen. And and they'll probably be doing most of the service in Spanish. It's fine. You know, it doesn't matter. We, we can speak in tongues all the time over there. I don't, you know, whatever. Just pray for them to see God move. Our focus of worship. So let's 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 let me uh, share this one thing. Let's see. I have a real nice word here. Let me read this to you. Okay? It says, "Our souls flourish. Our spirit reaches maximum satisfaction when we make God the object of our worship. God gets the glory, and we get all the joy. Amen. Yeah. God gets all the glory, and He gives you joy." 
when you worship him. I see some smiles in here. I know you know what I'm talking about because you know you've been there. When you worship God or you spend time in his word or you prayed about something and all of a sudden God just blesses you with joy, right? You just know it. It's just like, I can't, uh, I can't, I don't know what's going on in my life. I can't, I, I, I'm confused. Things are falling apart. Well, I'm going to worship God. Put on the radio if you want, Christian music. Maybe just getting silent before God. Has you ever did that? Just like turn off all the TVs, turn off all the music, right? Drive down the road with no radio on. Yeah. Right? Because I want to just spend some time worshiping Him. And then the joy fills up your car or your room where you're at. You know what I'm talking about? Because God wants to bless you because you took time to honor Him. And He wants to bless you. Could you imagine, just the people in this room right here, if we would change our focus. Because if we don't, and I believe it's the problem of the world, is that they don't have focus. Their focus is not God. And then we see why or the results of that. When we don't put God first, there's, a, there's something that happens that's not good. When we put ourselves before God, and that's in Romans chapter 1. Can you turn there with me? I'm almost done. I'm going to read the whole thing. I think verse 18 will start there. So, I mean, you've got to read the first part of chapter 1 this afternoon. You go home and read the first part of chapter 1 of Romans. But the second part says when you're not honoring God, people get crazy and do nasty stuff. Yeah. Right? The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godliness and wickedness of man who suppress the truth by their wickedness since what uh, may be known about God is plain to them. Because God, what, listen, I don't want to read it too fast. What is known about God is plain to the wicked ones. God's not hiding his love and his grace to anybody. It, but they choose to not follow God, right? They choose their own uh, will over God's will. It's plain to everybody what the gospel is, amen? Okay, and so it's plain to them. God has made it plain to them, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood from what he has been made, so that men are without excuse. Hallelujah. No, they'll have no excuse. For although they know God, they neither glorify Him nor as God nor give thanks to Him, but their thinking becomes futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like men, birds, animals, and reptiles. So they created, they, they worship. Therefore, in verse 24, they, therefore they gave over themselves over into sinful desires of their hearts to sexual immorality for the discreet, degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for lies and worship and serve created things rather than the Creator. So people are worshiping their jobs, their successes, their whatever, their money, you know, or they're worshiping, and we, we can say that about America, but remember the word of God is for every country and every tribe and every nation. So people make objects uh, uh, that they worship and they can't, they, they need to worship God. And we do the same thing. We put idols in our own hearts. Sometimes our idols could be our wives or our children or our spouses. Right? It could be we honor them more than we honor God. But if we honor God first, we can honor and love them better because we honor God first. Amen? Verse 26 says, Because of this, God gave them over to their shameful lusts. And then you can see what happened. 28 says, Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, then they went over to their the pray, it says the pray mind. Their minds are messed up. So how do these people in this world can think of these awful things to do? Because they don't worship God. Yeah. They have a worship problem. And I think in the church we have a worship problem too. I'm not gonna, I don't want to beat you up or anything like that, but I think, why do people murder? Why is there death? Why is there poverty? Why do people just show up to church and not be involved? Or how can they be, uh, say they're, this is my cousin, so we went to a family reunion, and so some of them are Christians, and they got to be all flavors of Christian. I couldn't get into that part of it, but they wanted to let me know, since they know I'm a pastor, they want that they're Christians, right? And then they're, um, I don't know, I have a problem with Christians drinking beer. 
I have a problem with Christians smoking cigarettes. I think he's a bad witness to the unbeliever, you know. I just, that's me, you know. Everybody deals with that. Uh, I think it's, I can support that by the word of God. So then they're, they're trying to be this, they, you know, they're around me, so it has an effect with my cousin Danny. Um, we used to do not so good things together back in the day, like you were 16 and 17. But anyway, so he's uh, gonna, he wants to smoke a cigarette, right? So it's in his pocket. And I'm standing in front of him, we're talking about, he was in the Marine Corps for a little while, we're talking about that, we're just talking about life, getting to know each other again. And he's reaching for his cigarettes in his pocket. But then he, he's like confronted with me as a pastor, so he's like really uncomfortable with that. And I'm like, and I just, of course, I just love this, and you, maybe it's bad in my heart that I do this, but I kind of like the struggle that they deal with people trying to struggle with that moment of, should I smoke my cigarette in front of him, you or not? And Jesus would have been fine with it. Right? I mean, he went to everybody's house. He had dinner with everybody. They did whatever they were doing, and he shared the word with them, right? So, I mean, Jesus would be fine with it. But I just liked the struggle. I didn't say anything. I didn't release him, like, go ahead and smoke your cigarette. <laughs> but I didn't know he was struggling with it, you know? So, I just sat there, and he, he got a cigarette out, and then he gave it to his wife, because his wife wanted one. And then I know he wanted to take one, so he pulled another one out, and he's, like, holding it. And he was, like, shaking almost, like he didn't know what to do. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he smoked a cigarette. I mean, I just know that God, when you, when you have God in you, and the joy of the Lord is part of your life, people are confronted with truth. Yeah. And they have to deal with it at that That's moment. Right. If it's, because it's something inside him said he shouldn't be smoking a cigarette. It wasn't me, right? It wasn't, when Jesus was in Zacchaeus' house, it wasn't, it wasn't the, Jesus would say, hey Zacchaeus, you ripped all these people off, you stole money from these people, and then Zacchaeus stood up and, and repented. No, Zacchaeus just being in God's presence said, "Oh man, I got, man, I've been doing all this stuff wrong." He just stood up and started saying. He stood up in the middle of all his friends and said, shared all the stuff that he was doing wrong. He, he repaid all that money back to everybody he ripped off or made a promise he would. But Jesus didn't say you're making, you're sinning, you're doing all this stuff wrong. He just was there. That's what happens when you when you worship God. He's an object for your worship, and you get to be in those moments where you can say, "The Lord loves you." It doesn't matter. He's looking at your heart, right? He can change your life just that quick because the joy and the presence of God is part of who you are. Oh, folks. God has to be the center of your worship. Verse 4, Psalm 138, 4 says this. May all the kings of the earth praise you. Oh Lord. When they hear the word of your mouth, may they sing of the ways of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord is great. You could read the rest of that chapter. The glory of the Lord is great. True understanding of worship leads us to God's joy in your life. How many want joy in your life? Uh, how many would like joy overflowing? Just, yeah, God, I want to know that I'm serving you. And I know it's, I sometimes it's tough because people say things and we're, we're confronted with truths around the world or pe false truths around the world trying to condemn us. But no, I, I, I want the joy to overflow that situation so the isms and all the laws and rules of the world doesn't matter because, God, I'm worshiping you. And just like that little girl, my little grandchild, when I give her a present... <laughs> You know, I love it when they 100% just in love with me and they just wrap their arms around me and thank me or thank Tina. You know, I like when Tina gets, like, when they do jump on Grandma too, I just love that just watching that, you know, it just brings so much joy to me. And that's what God wants to do this morning. He wants to just love on you this morning. He wants you to love on Him full, wholeheartedly, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Amen. And I know. Just like when I was preparing for this, God revealed things in my heart I had to get rid of. Like, God, okay, yeah, I want, I'm kind of selfish, you know? Like, I want to take my afternoon nap, whatever. You know, I like watching baseball for three hours on TV. I just got into that this last couple of years, and I can sit there for three hours and watch a baseball game. Hey, Amen. I love going fishing. I love doing a lot of things, you know, going hunting. I love those things, but I can't put that before God. I remember a time Tina and I was like, I, I was going to share that. I didn't tell you about this, but anyway. Oh, you're fine, um, but at the time, we, Tina and I became Christians, and we were young, we were 19 years old. 
I mean, we weren't just like going to church Christians. We were on fire Christians. I mean, if you walk near us, you're going to hear about Jesus. Amen. And we're going to pray for you. We were just like that. And we got into, and we, before we became Christians, we were, uh, we fished in the ocean and in this river to, for our dinner because we were, I got in some trouble and we just didn't have any money and food. And so we, Tina would fish during the day. I'd pick her up from the river and then we'd go home, whatever she caught us, and we had for dinner. We lived like that for about six months. And uh, then we became Christians in that time. So thank God, we just give God thanks and pray. We got a job, we got promotions. God just blessed us. But we had uh, gotten into fishing, right? So we got into fishing so much that even on one Sunday morning, we decided to go fishing instead of going to church. And I don't think that was really bad in itself, but people rely, people that we led to Jesus, they were at church. So they're like, where were you? Because we were at church, if you were at church. Well, we went fishing instead. We spent a Saturday night and all Sunday morning, and, and I caught a big fish too, a big king mackerel. But anyway, it was awesome. Big fish. It was huge, 34 inches, you know, whatever. Anyway, it was good. But um, they were, they come out to the fishing pier after church looking for us. Yeah. They were upset, you know. I thought, wow, everything we do is a witness. So the one fishing on Sunday isn't a bad thing, except for when you have something you're supposed to be, some people you're taking care of. It's different. So we, I told Tina one day, we had spent money. I mean, after this time, we had got promoted, got some money. We bought some nice fishing pin, fishing reels, you know, with a nice fishing pole. Had a weight pole where you threw the weight out there. Had a fighting pole. Had all this equipment. The, Leaders that I had to make myself, all this, I got to learn all this stuff from the guys on the fishing pier. And I told Mom, Tina, I said, Mom, I told Tina, I said, listen, I think God wants me to get rid of all this stuff. Because why? My, my, my heart was towards, I couldn't stop thinking about it. It's almost like bass fishing last year. Fishing, fishing, fishing. I just love it. In the ocean, you don't know if you catch a fish this big or this big. It's the same hook. You got to, it's, it's amazing. I love that kind of stuff. But my heart was towards that over God, yes. putting that before God. And I had to get rid of that in my life so I could continue to worship Him. I don't know what's in your life right now that's hindering you from being fully 100% on with God in your worship. But I want to I take a time this morning to get rid of that. Is that okay? I want to give you an opportunity to say, let the Holy Spirit say, Holy Spirit, examine my heart. If there's anything that's not of you, or if my heart's been hardened towards you, God, soften it so I can worship you. So the object of my life of worship will be you alone. Amen? So let's do that. Can we do that? Let's, Dan Tina's going to play uh, some music, and we will sing afterwards. But on the way up, Linda, would you grab that paper and pen right there? Would you stand there? Would you guys come? And let's take a moment and give in at the altar here, and let God examine yourself. Would you take a moment for that? It would be a little bit different than our ending of service today. And just come and grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and then just write as the Holy Spirit reveals to you things that are in, inappropriate in your life or your focus of worship is different. You know? I was thinking of Cindy. I'm sorry I said that. I was thinking of you. Cindy is an amazing young lady. She, she, she's a ballerina. She does, what is it, the play thing? Color, color guard at school. She got a uh, we're worn out of all the other people recently. Amazing. So her focus could be easily those things because all the accolades are, oh, great, dude, what a wonderful city you are. Right? But then she has to say, no, I do this all because of God. I give him all the glory. He's given me the ability to do this thing. Amen? And that's what we have to do. We have to have a heart, a pure heart towards God. Would you do that? Would you come? Come on, stand up. It'd probably be easier if you stood up, right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And just come. Come on. Yeah, come on. Hallelujah. Come. Grab a piece of paper. Grab a